This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello furniture friends, Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. I am about to get started working on this little bar cabinet that I thrifted last week. I'm going to do my very best to fix and freshen it up without interfering too much with its mid-mod style. So I found this little bar cabinet last week while I was out thrifting and I couldn't wait to dive into it. Structurally, it is very sound. It's solid wood and really stable, but the front of it and the legs have definitely taken a beating. There are some pretty decent chunks missing and for me, that makes this the perfect candidate for a makeover. I was really hoping that I could just lift these doors up out of the tracks, but they're too big. So I flipped the whole cabinet over to see if there was some other way that I could easily take it apart and get those doors out. On the bottom, I found this old inspection tag from the Chelsea Chair Company. I had a look at the base and the bottom of the cabinet. The base was held on with a few screws and there were a few more that I could see holding the bottom board. So I took the base off to see what I could see under there. In this tiny little gap, I could see that the sides and the bottom were all held together with dowels and glue. And since the unit is in such great condition, I didn't want to try and take it apart and separate anything and risk damaging something. So I decided to just keep the doors in place and work around them. Next, I wanted to address these big chunks out of the front. I grabbed some quick wood, which is a two part epoxy putty that is moldable and dries really quickly to a nice hard finish. While I waited for that wood putty to set up, I moved over to the base. These brass pegs were just pressure fit into their holes. So I gave them each a light tap to loosen them up and then just pulled them out with some pliers. I hooked my detail sander up to my shop vac and grabbed a few of these foam interface pads to give my sander some cushioning so that I can strip off all of the damaged finish and old stain without distorting any of the curves. I started off with some 120 grit sandpaper and that did a really nice job of cutting through the old finish so I stripped the entire frame with that. Once I had it down to bare wood, I switched out to some fresh 180 grit sandpaper to smooth out any roughness, and then I went back to my wood filler. I've never had a problem with quick wood not setting or melting like this when I sand it, but it was cold out in the garage when I put the wood filler on, so I don't think it cured properly, and it ended up just falling out of my repair. So I mixed up some of this Verithane and wood filler instead. This is another two part epoxy filler. It's just like Bondo. It dries fast and hard. So once you mix the two parts together, you have to move fast.
While my second choice of wood filler cured up, I grabbed some bare water-based stain in the color English Chestnut and rubbed a coat over the base with a lint-free rag. This is pretty close to the original finish. I was kind of impressed with myself. I think it's just a tiny bit lighter, but I love the way that it turned out. By the time I was done with my stain, the filler was dry and it sanded out much better. I used that same 180 grit sandpaper to buff out any dents or scratches and then scuffed up the rest of the old finish just to give the surface a little bit of texture and grip. As I was vacuuming out the sanding dust, I pushed the doors down their tracks to get them out of my way and knocked the one knob against the other and broke the glass. Devastated, does not even come close to what I was feeling. I was so mad at myself, but I knew I had to figure out a way to move on. I couldn't leave it because it will continue to break as the doors get moved around and someone's gonna get hurt. I couldn't just find a new piece of glass and pop it in there because like I already discovered, taking the whole cabinet apart isn't an option. I could have left it as an open shelf, but closed storage is valuable. So I decided that the next day I would pop over to Home Depot and have them cut down a piece of eight inch thick MDF to the same size as the glass doors. And before I headed inside for the night, I smashed out the rest of the glass. After working all day on this piece and then having such a feeling of catastrophe, when I broke that door, I thought I would end my day with this new class by Dan Dan Liu called Meditation 101. I've still got a few lessons left to complete, but the 10 minute guided meditation really helps me reset and refocus myself so that I can rest for the night and keep moving forward. Skillshare can help you make this year a year of learning, growth, and connection through your creativity. If you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn, then Skillshare is the perfect place to start. Photography, interior design, leadership, lifestyle, you can find a class that will match your goals. They are ad-free, so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills, and they launch new premium classes each week, so there's always something fresh to discover. Members get unlimited access to learning with classes that you can always work through at your own pace, and the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description box and use my code Katie Scott salvaged by K Scott will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Day two of this project started with a quick trip to the depot where I got those new doors cut and then I stopped by the paint department to choose my color. I wanted to go a little outside of my usual comfort zone, but still stay true to the era of this bar. And I landed on glazed pot, this earthy terracotta color. I was going to have them mix it into their bare decorative chalk line, but I decided at the last second to branch out and try their Alkid enamel paint instead. Before I could paint, I needed to prime and seal up all of the porous bare wood and wood filler spots. To make things easy, I grabbed a can of my favorite primer and applied two coats. I also wanted to seal up the newly stained base and I've had this can of Watco lacquer in my supply closet for as long as I can remember. So I thought this would be an easy way to go. I gave it a good shake and then sprayed on a total of three light coats over the base. I test fit my new doors to make sure they were gonna work and then gave the primer a quick once over with some 400 grit sandpaper. 
And then I flipped the bar over so that I could mask off the bottom. Stuff like these tags are the reason that I don't often paint the backs of my furniture. I don't want to lose these little pieces of history. I poured about half of the quart of paint into my Wagner Flexio sprayer with the detail finish nozzle. I've never used this paint before, so I decided to just follow all of the instructions on the can. It says not to thin this at all. You can apply it with a brush, a roller, or airless sprayer, and it can be recoated in four to eight hours depending on temperature and humidity. After spraying my first coat upside down, I flipped the cabinet over and sprayed another two coats, waiting those four hours in between. By this point in the day, I had the heater in the garage running, so it was about 18 degrees in there. And I also had my box fan blowing the warm air around so things could dry out faster. This paint takes a lot longer to dry and cure than the chalk style paints that I usually use, but it doesn't need any additional top coat. I'm not too sure that I'm going to be reaching for it again because of the long dry time and also because it smells like paint, which is not the case with most of the furniture paints that I use. And if I make a mistake or get a drip, I can't sand that out. But it did get the job done on this one and I'm glad I gave it a try. I let my last coat of paint dry overnight and then the next morning I stuck all of the hole covers back in with just the tiniest bit of wood glue. I brought all of the pieces inside to my photo wall and put it all back together. I know my color for this one might be questionable for some of you, but I think it fits this bar so well. I might add a little bit of extra gold detailing somewhere on these doors to jazz them up, but I do love it just like it is. And with furniture, I tend to leave it on the planer side so that it can always be accessorized and decorated with all of the frilly and fun stuff. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again while I worked on this project. Make sure to leave me a thumbs up, a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you all next time. Bye.